isn't honeycomb amazing? I mean, it's hexagon shaped. These tiny little bugs are making the structure that is hexagon shaped. Why do they do this? How do they do this? And what is the benefit to all of this work? The first thing when bees build a home and move into an empty space, first thing they do is build honeycomb. Without honeycomb, it's difficult for them to communicate. There's nowhere for the queen to lay eggs, so there's no babies. There's nowhere to store their food. Uh, nothing. How bees build honeycomb is actually not as complicated as I originally thought. What they do is they take an empty space, such as this gap here in the frame, and they form a chain. They link their legs together. This bee chain is what we call festooning. And when they do this, they're essentially creating a scaffolding for them. And then they consume a whole lot of honey in order to secrete beeswax. Now, as humans, we when we eat a whole bunch of sugar, our body turns it into fat. But bees have to eat a whole lot of honey in order to produce this beeswax. This is only done by the worker bees. The worker bees are all female. However, they never mate and they never have babies. Uh, the queen does not have this gland to produce wax, nor do the drones, what we call the males in the hive. And they are not part of the honeycomb building process at all. So the worker bees will eat a bunch of honey, they form their chain, they secure create little plates of wax on their underbelly out of that gland, and then they vibrate their flight muscles to produce heat, just like they do in when it's cold out to produce heat in the hive. And that heat makes the beeswax malleable now, and they can mold that little bit of beeswax into cylinder shapes. These cylinders are about the size and shape of them, just a little bit bigger. So they're about three eighths of an inch, and then they're connecting the cylinders together. And they do the same thing. They produce heat to make the beeswax malleable, and they connect the cylinders to each other. And when this happens, these cylinders form straight lines. So if you were to blow bubbles and you had two bubbles that joined together, where the bubbles meet forms a straight line. And it's the same thing with honeycomb. When the bees form these cylinders and they heat them up and they join together, it actually forms a straight line creating that hexagon shape. So the bees aren't there with their ruler measuring out these hexagon shapes. They're just connecting the cylinders together. When bees find a space for their home, it's usually empty. And the first thing they do when they move in is build honeycomb. This honeycomb is how they get around the hive because they're not flying inside the hive. The honeycomb becomes the stair, the ceiling, the floor, a way for them to get around. When they're walking on the honeycomb, they're also communicating. That is where they would be doing a waggle dance or standing on top of each other and shaking the other bee to let the bee know that there's work to be done within the hive. And bees are walking up to the queen all the time and touching her with their antenna and then distributing her pheromone around the beehive. A honeycomb is also where the baby bees grow. So it is essentially a crib for the baby bees, which is what we call brood, the bees that haven't hatched yet. The queen will go and back up her body into a cell and she will lay an egg. That egg will then hatch into a white worm after a few days. And that is what we call a larva. Then the larva will have a capping over it and pupate just like a caterpillar does when it is in a cocoon before it hatches as a butterfly. The bee does the same thing. It goes from a worm to a fully grown adult bee and it will hatch. Now honeycomb is also where the bees store their food. They will store pollen and nectar in there as what we usually call bee bread. And that's primarily fed to the larva because it's protein rich. It's also where they put nectar, which is what they gather from flowers, and the primary source of food for honeybees. Then the bees will stand on the honeycomb and fan their wings really fast to evaporate the majority of the moisture. And they will put a capping over it once it is honey and ready for storage. Comb honey or honeycomb filled with honey is the primary product that I sell. It's a lot of fun to share it with people for the first time. You can eat the entire thing, but I prefer to spit out the beeswax. Of course, honey is the only food that doesn't go bad. And when stored in this sealed beeswax cell, it can last 
potentially forever. Cell sizes can vary a little bit. When the baby bees are in the cell sizes, you will see the cell sizes vary a lot. Some are a little bit smaller, some are a little bit bigger. And then of course the males, the drones, they are about 50% larger than the worker bees. And so when bees want males in the hive, they will build honeycomb that is considerably larger. And then when the queen lays an egg in this cell, she is laying an unfertilized egg. As a beekeeper, you can choose to put foundation in your beehive, and that's made of beeswax or plastic, and it has a little bit of that honeycomb imprint on it, but very shallow, about a, a sixteenth of an inch, and the bees build honeycomb off of it. However, Personally, I am a foundationless beekeeper, which means I don't put any foundation in my beehives and I let the bees build honeycomb sizes, whatever size they like. And it's actually a lot of fun and really interesting to see the variation in cell sizes throughout the beehive. Honeycomb can vary in color. When bees first produce the beeswax and the comb is new, it's usually white or very pale yellow. But just like my t-shirts when I'm around my two-year-old, as I wear them, they just get dirty and covered in food and they start to turn different colors. You'll see that on this frame, there's a more of a tan color. And on this frame, it's dark brown. And this frame is more of an orange yellow. So uh, this frame is one from harvesting honey. The orange and the yellow is staining the comb because that's the color of the honey and pollen. This dark brown one is often the frames that you will see where the brood or the baby bees are. And that is for two reasons. One, because those frames have a lot of bees walking on them because the baby bees are fed constantly throughout the day, every day until a capping is put on it. And so that comb just gets really dark and dirty. But also it's because they line the cells with the substance we call propolis. Propolis is plant sap and it's gathered by the bees for a variety of things. One, to seal up the hive, pluck up any cracks or crevices so that rain and the elements don't get in or to keep animals from getting into the hive, but it also has antibacterial properties. And so they will line those cells that are going to be for the baby bees with propolis to essentially disinfect that crib before the queen lays an egg in it. Propolis is usually a pretty dark brown and will stain everything and anything it comes in contact with, which is why these frames get so dark. If you have a frame of honeycomb like this, and you were to pull it out and squish it up, you now have a ball of beeswax. This can be melted down and filtered to make a solid chunk of clean beeswax that you can use for a bunch of things. Beeswax is a really great product, makes some really great chapstick, sorry, lip balm, and it is used in all sorts of body products, especially products that you would be using during those cold, dry winter months. And that's because beeswax locks in moisture. You can use beeswax to seal wooden furniture as well as fabric to make it waterproof. They used to coat fabric that was used in sails for boats with beeswax. And of course there's beeswax candles. Beeswax candles are the only kind of candles that actually improve the air quality. They're known to cause dust and pollen to fall to the ground and they release the slightest little hint of beeswax and honey into the air. I've made perfume with essential oils and beeswax, and then there's a variety of things you can do with beeswax and artwork. And there you have it. That is everything I know about beeswax. If there is anything else you want to add in, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. I see the turkeys.